So being able to find files in directories that aren't supposed to be exposed to the web server or to web clients is amazing as well. Whether it's simply displaying files that are in a different folder or not part of the website, or being able to run commands or execute or pass control to files in different folders. Those are great exploits. This used to be a really, really common technique for intruding on web servers and actually running arbitrary code, shipping myself a command line, getting access to a file that may have some secrets in it, that kind of thing. So examples of this are right there, example.com backslash dot dot backslash, where essentially that command passed into a web server that's not protected against this type of attack will back up all the way to the root directory and then go off the root directory to a directory called Windows and run command.exe. And I can throw whatever parameters I want on there. That's really amazing stuff because I shouldn't be able to, from a web client, get to Windows, first of all, or run command.exe. But if the web server is not hardened against this type of directory traversal attack, it's vulnerable. Some servers are hardened against this attack by looking for the backslash dot dot, which in the second sub bullet there, you can see that these percent characters are actually the escape codes for backslash dot dot backslash dot dot backslash. It's the same URL, except with these backslash dot dot hidden a little bit where the web server will actually understand that and give us the same command prompt but maybe a filter on the front end actually doesn't catch that. And then also on Unix side, there's plenty of examples of the same thing, except Unix uses a forward slash instead of a backslash. That's not really protection. That's just a context switch between Unix and Windows. This type of directory traversal attack is one that is typically hardened against very early on in any kind of web deployment. However, it's sometimes overlooked or sometimes inconsistent where, again, in a web farm of 10 or 15 web servers, maybe one of the web servers out there doesn't get protected against this type of attack, and you can transit directories. So it's worth trying. It's worth trying quite a bit, in fact, to see if it's going to work. Not quite as catastrophic, but can have some unintended benefits to an ethical hacker, is being able to enumerate the contents of a directory on a web server. Oftentimes, an administrator forgets to turn off directory server listing or server directory listing, and you can use one of these contexts listed here to actually list the files in a folder on a web server. This doesn't mean you can get outside of the web root on the server. It just means that you could maybe, instead of going to an HTML or some type of dynamically built page, you can actually go and list the files there and select which ones you're going to use. Again, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a compromise. It's not always a flaw. There are many web servers out there that intentionally allow this to be in place so that clients can browse through and look for, let's say, files or images or different types of assets, kind of like an FTP server or a file server of some type, except just slightly different implementation. What I use this for typically is for footprinting a server. I'll look for files that I should be able to see, and then potentially there's files in there that I shouldn't be able to see. I'll certainly pull every file back to my client and examine it in some detail if I don't think this directory listing should be enabled. You've probably seen this image before. Every once in a while, you'll see it either internally or on the web. This IIS7 really, really pretty bitmap. Well, what it means is that an administrator has installed Internet Information Services, version 7, on this server and not configured it, not done anything with it. This is the default installation of IIS. Well, you might think to yourself, that just means that nobody's using it, or that just means that the admin hasn't gotten around to tweaking it. There's probably not any security vulnerabilities here. Wrong. It means that the default code for IIS has been installed and you now have access because you now know all of the default code that's installed in IIS by default. So you can examine that on your local installation. You can look for known vulnerabilities. What this tells you is that you can actually ascertain the exact state 
of IIS because you see this bitmap. That doesn't sound like much on the surface, but when you actually take a look behind it, the sample code that gets installed, the services that are enabled by default and so forth, all right there for the exploits. Just need to start looking them up and mapping the, the known exploits to the potential for what type of attack you're trying to conduct. And you may have seen this kind of error before when you happen into a website. This error actually came from a live website and what happened was I simply went to the root of the website and it had an error. And instead of just saying, I've got an error, come back later. Well, this website actually gave me an enormous amount of information including path names, including file names, including configuration information, probably information users like me that are outside the firewall, that are unauthenticated, that are anonymous, should not have. It, it essentially footprints the entire server and configuration for me without me having to do anything at all. In fact, I'm, I'm not, I'd put in zero effort and I footprinted the web server. So this is not something that happens by default. It's oftentimes something that a web developer has enabled or configured and simply forgets to turn off or forgets to change or forgets to limit to inside the firewall rather than outside. Again, another godsend because you don't know when information is in here. I've seen passwords in these kind of, of stack dumps. I've seen all kinds of different server and configuration information in here. Whenever you encounter this type of error, you should absolutely analyze it. And if you don't see this error, you should certainly try to get it, perhaps by going to the website forward slash and then smash the keyboard for a moment to get some garbage in there. You may actually find that you, you get more information from an error than you get from active footprinting. Web servers, I don't know, for about the last 10 years or so, it's been really rare to find a completely unpatched web server because some other attacker has found it first and completely compromised it. But when you do find a web server that's not running at a current patch level, it's not running the most current version of Internet Information Services or Apache or the underlying operating systems, it's simply time to start looking up the potential attacks on the web to find out what types of attacks you can conduct and how. All kinds of automated scanning tools are in place. All kinds of direct scanning techniques are in place. Usually the easiest way for this to occur is simply a banner grab. A banner grab on a web server is the easiest way to find out what versions of a few different components it's running and then start mapping your attack that way. The other interesting aspect here is kind of this middle bullet, which if you don't see a lot of updates going on, you may actually understand that there's probably other things that are potentially vulnerable on this server. So if it's a web server running IIS 7, and as you footprint it, you find out that it's unpatched, IIS is unpatched, well, probably the underlying operating system is unpatched. Maybe you can actually remote into it. Maybe you can get an IPC dollar connection to it and start enumerating shares on it because it is a server, that kind of thing. It, it just really depends on the attack you're conducting as to whether you're going to go that far. If you're limited in scope to just attacking web or just footprinting web servers, that's cool. Stay within that boundary.